Hi guys, Mindstone here, and today I'll be showing you how to do the heroic giant fin using a druid deck. It, I know the deck looks sort of weird, but you need to handle a ton of Murlocs, right? So, you gotta have a lot of ball clear and a lot of all these things. Patron's a big finisher, uh, you should note though, it's very important for you to get that one out and do a lot of work for you. We just, we want just one Sumpy Chow, that's good enough. Except for that, we want some of the anti aggro. These are fine, but I don't know. They're like. But Death is really good for early game, but he's not all that good later. He helps you survive though, so it's okay. The boss has this broken hero power, so you should expect to just get a rush down almost instantaneously. I think I'll just go for the unstable ghoul instantly, just to clear that board, start pushing some damage into his face. Even though the face damage is not really mattering, it'll come like just slowly. Because, well, you can't re attack the boss, because if you do attack the boss, he'll overwhelm you. With all his Murlocs. Okay, so this is a bit of an odd situation. I think I'll just play the Death Lord for some tempo, but that might have been a mistake. If he goes like War Leader and five of these small Murlocs, I don't know. Actually, four is enough. Oh, well, that's gonna be three Murlocs, right? No, that's gonna be four. That's okay then. He attacks into it. That sucks. I am able to keep my death lord alive. The reason I'm not going phase here uh, is because if you place war leader, my death lord will die, and I don't like that. So I'm just keeping stuff alive. Luckily, he's not playing bluegill warriors, so you don't get screwed over entirely. I really want to do all the patron here, but the problem is that they're simply too threatening with these. Oh, well, whatever. I think I'll go for the patron. But I'll just go for the living roots on that one. And the patron's fairly safe then. He doesn't really care a lot about patrons, he just lets them stay. Most of the time. Oh, well, that's pretty nice get that one burned. Oh, that's fine as well. Don't care all that much about it. It's kind of annoying that I can't swipe the board away though. But the patrons will slowly get to the point where they can deal with everything. We'll just deal with some of the peskiness of the board. Don't really know where to attack. With the bit of luck, I'll get to establish my patron board before he goes absolutely crazy. These are really annoying, actually. They make it so I can't actually kill the stuff. I'll have to swipe once again. Why did he coin there? <laughs> I don't know why he coined. It just, it seemed weird. Yeah, it was just a random coin out of nothing. most important thing right here is actually denying him playing the uh, Log War Leader. Sabotage does that by giving an additional 5 mana he has to pay, so you'll have, he'll have 2 mana, right? That means he can't play the Murloc War Leader. Which is like tremendously good for me. I'm taking a lot of damage here, but I think it's okay. He doesn't really have all that much charge damage that he can just pour out. Okay, let's see. I'll just use the wounded patrons. I'm gonna go to four HP. I died to Warrior here. But, oh wait, I've got I've gone to five HP. That's just fine then. 
I have, he has to do double wall leader to kill me now. That's not quite likely. Oh well, no, it's not gonna happen. We, we're actually seeing the dumbest sequencing plays ever here. Guys, you, if you ever play Murlocs, just don't ever do this. Play the Cold Lights here at last. But that's the way the bosses are sequenced. It's almost sad, because I think Blizzard could do that better, but it's fair enough, then you actually have a chance of winning the game. And I actually you can manage to clear the entire board, which is like really lovely. It just means I'm I probably won't die now actually. I think it's quite safe. This game. Yeah, I believe it's safe. Because he could fill his entire board, right? And I could just clear one menu with one patron. And I'd be fine. But right now it's just all these annoying ones. And I have some answers in my hand if there should be problems with certain Murlocs. The jungle moonkin is like mainly for removing those bigger and dumber threats. And I'd rather use the patron to clear this one than I would use my face actually. Because, well, I want to keep my face HP high. And I'm not really going to lose my patrons. There's no bulk clears or anything. And yeah, it's only old Murkai that I fear as a charger. That's okay. You just feel support again. This one will cost a patron, but I've got a 1 HP patron, so it's fine. That one might just cost a patron as well. It's okay. The 2 HP patrons can be sacrificed. Just no war leaders and I'm happy. That's all I care about. Not quite certain how I want to do this, but I think this looks good. I still get a pretty good patron board here with three big patrons and two HP. The two HP you should be able to get value anyway. That one will require one of the eight one HP patrons. Okay, he's actually making some pretty dangerous stuff happen here. There's only the old Murkai that I actually fear. Actually, and he's, he'll go fatigue occasionally, so it means that you don't actually have to rush him down. There's one cut left. It's probably not anything then. <laughs> I just thought it was anything can happen. Just kill that. The reason I'm trading my patron to that and not letting it live is because I can kind of fill the void anyway. So, I don't feel any reason to not just do that. There's only two cards. Two cards can't do six damage, right? I don't think two of his cards can do six damage, unless it is Miracle Murk and Nyan Nya and what's it called? Uh, the old Murgai. I just play the Murloc Tide Call actually, because it'll get buffed when you play some Murlocs. Oh, well, he draws three cards, I just forgot that. There we have the Murloc Melon. Yeah. We're gonna have some buffing for this one then. Still no dangerous stuff. This one might be annoying, but it's not dangerous. Yeah, they're not dangerous. That one may have to be removed. And that one's definitely harmless. Okay, let's see. First of all, I start suiciding the patrons that I know will have to die. Then I will get the patrons that I can make multiply. 
a trade, and then I'll go face with this. So and that's just gonna happen every turn from now. So this exact play, if I don't die. But that's actually how you win. It's it's very very safe at this point. I mean, if you get your patient out there, this deck doesn't let Baron get in. I would love to do that, and in any deck against the boss actually, because it just helps you deal with them so much nicer and more cleanly. And that's just it's just really nice to get that opportunity. Now he doesn't fill the board anymore, so it's quite a lot easier actually dealing with him. I don't know if I had lethal there, but it honestly it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna die during this turn. Oh, they've got more guy. So he's not that dangerous. He could have had lethal actually, right? No, there's no lethal in there. So I should have watched out obviously because a good sequencing play from this guy would have meant that I could die to Murai, but on the other hand, it's not likely. But that's how you do it, guys. Just try to get those patents out as early as possible and try to live until they get the board full and just make good trades. Try to fill the board with patrons every single turn. Try to keep them high HP. But yeah, that's pretty much it. When you get your patrons out, you won't really be using other cards. I should see I have a full hand here almost. And that's yeah, it's just because you don't need them. You can just deal with the patrons and just do that well. The only thing you're fearing is Old Murkai and the Wall Eaters. Those are dangerous and you have to put out uh, the Tide Callers quite quickly as well. But yeah, except for that, there's all these weak Murlocs and you just eat those up and get stronger for those. Um, be a bit watchful for when you swipe. You've got to really save it for the right occasion or you'll get overrun if you don't have it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough and I'll 